most of the time we start our smart home journeys a little backwards. We buy one device, then one more, and end up with a mishmash of smart home that's not fit for purpose. Instead, it is the time to take a page from the construction industry playbook and plan first. Yes, you heard that right. We will take a floor plan of an average flat and plan our smart home accordingly. As a matter of fact, this video will be helpful to both those who already have a finished apartment and those planning for some major refurbishment works. We will have to assume that you own the place, but I will try to make special mentions for renters throughout this video. This will work irrespective of your choice of the ecosystem, though I'd personally recommend Home Assistant or Apple HomeKit. Now let's build our floor plan. The assumption is simple. We will have a one bedroom apartment with an open plan kitchen and a single bathroom. Why? We want to have a foundational logic in place, which can then be duplicated to two, three, four to five bedroom flats. Importantly, this logic will also apply to houses, though for those you will have to take into account some additional elements such as outdoor spaces, more complex security and networking requirements. We will address those in one of the future videos. As we go over the planning, I will be putting together some costs. These are the amounts I feel appropriate to spend, though you may choose to spend less or more. I will also highlight critical elements that you should deploy first with this symbol because those are the ones that are much harder to retrofit later. Note that I always hire an electrician for any electrical wiring work. Your life is worth a lot more than 20 or 30 pounds per item they charge. Today, we will talk about the bedrooms. The usual bedroom will have a bed, a couple of bedside tables, a wardrobe, and few optional elements such as makeup tables, TV sets, or workstation. First things first. Let's plan our electric outlets. You will need at least two outlets on either side of the bed to charge your devices overnight. If you have a TV set, you should be planning for a minimum of four outlets, though I'd recommend at least six. Why so many? Well, you will need to connect your TV, Fire TV, or Apple TV, or both, a soundbar, or you may want to have a gaming console and a charging solution for your controllers. All of the above are six outlets already, and even if you are not planning on that many devices, having spares never hurt anyone, as you may arrange an additional charging station for your devices or be able to plug the hairdryer. You will also need at least six outlets for a workstation to charge your laptop, connect monitors, speakers, and other devices as necessary. You will only need around four outlets for the makeup table, though as you'd most likely need a lamp, a hairdryer, and have a few spare for additional beauty technology. Finally, we deploy a couple of outlets in your wardrobe. Those may be used for LED strips or to set up a serious power station to juice up multiple devices and do so out of sight. To sum it up, the number of outlets in a regular size bedroom starts with number 12 and goes all the way up depending on what you deploy. There is no harm in doing more than less, it's better off to invite an electrician once. This does not include outlets needed for floor lamps, lighting, or special devices such as presence sensors. For those you should budget additional outlets, you can choose between the actual outlets that replace the standard fixtures, adopt a smart plug socket solution, or smart power strip, the latter two being the perfect option for renters. In the UK, a solid option for outlets have been British General or Knightsbridge smart sockets. Tapo for smart plugs and Miros for smart power strips. There are plenty of alternatives on the market, so the choice is yours. That choice may also be dictated by your preferred smart home protocol. Availability of Wi-Fi versus Zigbee devices will differ, so these are additional considerations. A small note that you may need to upgrade your router should you go down the individual smart plug route. Just one bedroom will be generating 12 to 18 plug signals, so beware. But I digress. With outlets out of the way, it is time to talk about lighting. There are three schools of thought here. You go with smart bulbs, you go with smart switches, or both. Only the latter two are correct. Do not deploy smart bulbs on their own. The minute you flick a switch, they will be unavailable and you will be angry with yourself. To that end, we will plan for switches for main lighting at the entrance to the bedroom, one on either side of the bed and one near the workstation or makeup table. That way you have enough flexibility to switch wherever you are in the room. 
Now, by saying you need four switches, what I really mean is that you need at least one actual smart switch, like a Kara H1, but the other three do not have to be fully wired switches. You can deploy three smart buttons or three wireless remotes. Akara has those too. As a matter of fact, I'd recommend going down the smart button or remote route, as not all smart switches like being tied to each other, especially not in the four-way formation, and the cost of extra wiring from the electrician will be double the price of those buttons. In my experience, Zigbee is the choice here since most buttons will be battery operated and this option doesn't consume much energy at all. If you have more than one main light source, all you need is a two gang or a three gang switch so the logic remains. Buttons can then be configured accordingly in an automation. If you have reading lamps over your bed, you can have additional switches for those above your bedside tables, or use smart relays from Shelly, Akara, or Sunoff to achieve the necessary level of control. You do not need to worry about the lamps at the workstation, since those will be controlled by the smart outlet. Finally, if you plan for LED strips, you can go for the smart ones from the likes of Govi, or just use the dumb ones to leverage your smart sockets to do the on and off ordeal. Behind the TV, in the wardrobe, or behind your bed are all good options. Although in the latter case, you will need to add a couple more outlets, as your bedside ones will almost always be occupied by other devices. Finally, if you absolutely cannot stand the look of smart home switches, you should absolutely look for a Shelly Relay. It can work with any dumb switch and is also a great option for renters. With lighting out of the way, we can move to talking about room climate management. A temperature and humidity sensor somewhere near the bed will be a welcome addition and will help manage the bedroom environment. Depending on your choice between blinds and curtains, you may want to look for a smart driver. Akara produces devices for both options, and those are great in automations, though are easily retrofittable and, thus, can be purchased at a later date. Smart radiator valve, on the other hand, is a must-have. Akara, Tado, and many others provide options here, so it's just down to your choice of the ecosystem. Those devices are great at managing the room's microclimate and can be used in automations, especially those related to you being at home or away and saving you some money in the process. We are now moving to the last few bits to round up a solid smart home bedroom. First off, we should deploy an opening sensor at the door and a window so that we can improve security and create some great automations. Next up, presence sensor. This breed of devices is quickly displacing motion sensors as even though they are a lot more expensive, they are also a lot more useful. Either everything Smart Home EP1 or Akara FP2 are both great options. However, this should be one of the final purchases for the room on the list as without other items, monitoring one's presence is a little pointless. Note that presence sensor requires continuous power connection, so budget a socket for it. Finally, you may want to deploy a smart home hub with an IR blaster like Akara M2 or M3. It will allow you to bind devices to it, meaning a great responsiveness, and control some of the dumber technologies such as air conditioner. If you happen to have a heated floor, then I'd also look at smart controllers. For those, there are options available on the market today from the likes of warm-up. I generally do not recommend cameras in bedrooms since not all videos should be recorded. Unless you are working in a very specific industry or you need to freshen up your relationships. Anyways, do not deploy cameras in bedrooms without a good reason. And the only good reason for it is to keep an eye on infants and toddlers to make sure they are safe and sound. Cameras are dramatically better at keeping your stress levels low than radio nannies. I'd also advise against deploying any voice assistant in the bedroom. However, if you cannot live without the voice control, you may want to consider a sound bar that has one built in, or check out those upcoming button-shaped microphones that Akara showcased at CES 2024. And there you have a super smart bedroom. The overall cost for the smart home tech in this bedroom starts at £400 if you ignore optional devices and stick to basics. It should not go beyond 1000 at the top end unless you are going for the most premium brands and optional extras. This setup can be easily replicated to multiple bedrooms around your house with the only variety is the number of outlets and sensors needed. Hope this has been a useful video. See you in the next one.